Hello everyone, my name is Shrine, and welcome to my review of Ruby Wally 5, episode 12. Now, in this episode, I felt like, uh, on one hand, it was a good episode. But at the same time, it's loaded with a lot of problems. And one of my biggest complaints is the continuation and non-continuation of fights. When, um, when the episode starts with Wise pretty much laying dead on the ground, you know, the bad guys start fighting the good guys, which does not make sense to me once so bit. I didn't get why the bad guys had to stop fighting the good guys. You know, episode... Levin had a great setup. It had, you know, Crow versus Ray Raymond, then went to something else. And then we had Emerald versus Ruby. This was another one. Then we're going to finally get the rematch between Mercury and Yang. This is another potential good fight. And then, in the start of the episode, everything went to sense. So the bad guys, finally, the good guys, for no real reason. You know, oh no, why is this hurt? Oh no, we, we should stop fighting, guys. And, and it, and it kind of diluted all the excitement that 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 we got from episode eleven, at least for me, that is. Now, now as you know, this episode was going to reveal John's semblance. We all knew that from the cliffhanger in the episode that you know Weiss is going to get revived by John, but it didn't felt as dramatic at, or as special as I would have liked it to be. You know, I would have thought that you know maybe John will hold Weiss's hand, you know, crying, and then you know while the fights are going around, that's how I would have done it. And then, and then you put some nice uh, low-key uh, score music down the line, and then you got that dramatic close-up of Weiss's face. She slowly wakes up, and that did not happen one bit. See, even I could do it. Who had done a much better dramatic pose with that assemblance? Now, some people have theorized over the Rooster Teeth message boards of this episode, saying that his um, assemblance it may not be actually healing, but maybe very similar to. Uh, uh, a character from Bleach named Orihime, who happens to be one of the main females uh, of the series, and her ability was not really healing, but rather uh, reverting back to one's original state. Now, I could see Miles and Carrie co-oping this ability and try to work that into maybe some big uh, plot line in the future uh, volume of Ruby, but uh, for my indication, um, at least in the, in the creation of Ruby, Monty, Miles, and Carrie never specified anything about uh, being friends of Bleach. Now I could be wrong, and if I'm wrong, let me guys uh, confirm that because I don't mind them um, taking elements of certain anime. I think it's great, you know, take inspiration, but not be straight off copying. That's a great way to make this into a great show. It has been a great show, and in my eyes, it still is. It, I think they're just um, tripping themselves up in this volume. Now I would have to say the biggest uh, highlight of this episode is not because of John Samuels, which could have been. Uh, and that is the fight between uh, Osmond and Hazel. Now we got a lot of interesting uh, tidbit backstory to Hazel and why he has such a uh, disdain for Osmond. And the moment that uh, uh, Leonardo, you know, tells uh, Hazel that that little boy Oscar is uh, Osmond reincarnated, he went all full rage mode on him. <laughs> and by rage mode, he decided to activate his summons by going all full bane <laughs> on Oscar. And and the one thing I noticed from the moment that he revealed the semblance that, uh, and the opening in that, you know, Hazel is basically the combination of Ren and Nora, which it didn't hit me through until, the, until he activated the semblance. And that is, you know, Hazel, in the most part, from what we know, is very calm and collective, you know, doesn't like his emotions, but when uh, certain uh, close members of his family have been tragically lost, like Ren has, they go berserk. <laughs> and I love how the the... The semblance get the semblance of uh, Nora is pretty much the same thing as his. You know, electricity makes him stronger. He had two dust crystals inject himself. Like I said, the Bane reference, <laughs> and and he went all against his kid. And uh, and the fact that um, he blames Osmond for the death of uh, of his sister, wanted to become a a huntress, and blames Osmond for her for her choice. And I love how Oscar stepped into the plate to stand up to him and ask him the question, you know, was it her choice? You know, she made her choice. And and Hazel should have had honored that. And I thought that was a great character moment for Oscar as well. But, you know, Osmond uh, decided to, uh, wanted to save Oscar's life, so he took over. And that was an epic fight, man. It, it, it's surprising that, that how Osmond managed to get his ass kicked by sitting there, and yet he was able to do uh, uh, backflips and maneuvers with his uh, cane sword, or was it? Where really uh, Osmond's um, weapon really is, and he was holding his own against uh, Hazel, which was a good fight. Now the other part of the, uh, 
uh, the biggest highlight of this episode, and that was the plot twist that revealed in this episode. Now, now you guys could uh, jump forward a little bit and part to at least maybe a couple minutes ahead, and that was the big reveal of of who is really the Spring Maiden. And I love how you know Cinder was talking to Vinro, how it's a great experience to become you know opening the the doors with the relic. And I love how uh, Cinder was basically, you know, talking about, you know, Raven's uh, so-called reputation, you know, very cutting right there. And, and I love how to say, say the, the, they're all wrong. And she attacks Vinyl, trying to take her power. And I thought that was a great, great villain moment for Cinder. Cinder. And then when uh, the big reveal that um, that Cinder uh, finds out that Vinyl's not the, the spring man, but actually... Uh, uh, Raven and I love how they ended with the episode with them about to fight. Now, now I could be wrong. Now a lot of people are placing their bets. I'm probably putting my money on Cinder because you know she was able to kick Osmond's ass. I mean, really. Oh, but 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 Raven has a lot more combat skills. That doesn't mean squat, you know. But I don't want to get too excited because, like I said, I was just excited for stuff that went down in episode 11, and we have episode 12. Now. There's one thing I want to cap off before the end of this episode, and that is my, not this episode, my review, and that is the story versus execution. It seemed like uh, Miles and Carrie had a lot of uh, interesting story ideas, plot, but it seemed like they tried, the execution was off, and then trying to cram it all down into 16 minute episodes, or in this case, a two hour film. And. While I still give up on this series, you know, I love the characters, like I said many times before, you know, I like this world, um, seeing these four girls kick a whole lot of ass is something I really enjoy seeing, you know, but, you know, they really need to be a lot more smarter in how they play out the story, you know, we're in five seasons already, you know, there's certain characters we never get to actually uh, know their backstory or who knows how long before we actually get to see, see their backstory in later volumes, but it's just me. Well, that concludes my review of this episode. Guys, I'm curious what you thought about this episode. Uh, I'm also curious about your thoughts as well. Let me know in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching my video, and I'll have to catch you guys in the next video. Bye.